Hi, Dave here, and we have a new episode in the um, art review series, um, episode 11. And this time, we're going to take a look at the work of a Johnson Ting. Now, Johnson Ting is a AAA concept artist, an art director, and a collectible designer. So, I remember seeing his work way, way back. Um, I saw a speed painting video of his back in YouTube, um, in YouTube, and then years after I saw, I was kind of recommended a photo bash kind of video, and I actually did not make the connection, but I eventually stumbled or checked out his YouTube channel, and I kind of scrolled back to his very, very first videos. And I found the very same speed painting I found uh, way back in the day. And uh, yeah, so he's, he's not just a great kind of photo basher kind of guy. He does have a good solid base in painting. And uh, I do have a link to his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I will link it below in the description. And I, and I do recommend that you subscribe and check out his um, links below. So uh, we'll start or we'll view his art station profile again um, and start from his very kind of a last piece and work our way towards his uh, more recent piece. Now hopefully he did, it's kind of not, or it's kind of a, or his portfolio hopefully is based on a timeline and not necessarily kind of handpicked to look a certain way. So yeah. So... This one, this is some personal pieces of his and some fan art uh, posted six years ago. And, uh, oops, sorry about that. And uh, as you can see, he does like painting this kind of uh, theme wise. I think he loves painting kind of mech stuff. I think sci fi. He has a lot of sci fi stuff. And, uh, again, you can kind of see his, uh, strokes, painting strokes, if you kind of focus in. And, uh, sometimes you can't even tell that it's photo bashed. Like, it's, uh, you can just feel it's painted, and, it, and I think it's because he blends it in a very, um, professional way. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, so this is kind of a helicopter spaceship thing. Um, this is more fantasy, I believe. So this is back in 2012. Um, and he does like adding that kind of a... Shit, it's a kind of a cinematic effect where we have kind of a green or blue... And red kind of a shift. Shit, I'm not sure what the uh, proper term is, but uh, so this one actually looks looks more like a kaiju or something. It feels like, but uh, yeah, some Halo stuff. Um, so this is more painted, and you can see he's not a bad painter. It's pretty good. Nice. Uh, so again, he loves his mechs. Mmm, I like this one. And there's something about his uh, work that seems more kind of connected. Um, I mean, the work that I'm attracted to right now is sort of in the realm of... Um, or, excuse me. Um... The work that I'm interested in right now is kind of a, or I lean to right now, is sort of a Craig Mullins type, or a Miko something, because their work tends to be very, uh, um, it, it's not as opaque, you can kind of see the strokes a lot, it's very impressionistic, and... It's not like this, where it's more kind of compact. I mean, even though I can tell this is kind of painterly, in a way, it's still kind of compact, right? And, uh... 
This is pretty cool. So you can tell he did use some photos in the back and I think most of this is kind of painted with some kind of photo bash for the uh, for the platforms and maybe some of the uh, these little things. Mm. So I think I'm trying to balance now between more kind of impressionistic, expressionistic work and more kind of tight. Not necessarily tight, but more opaque and more compact work. Because um, uh, even though you can tell it's very uh, kind of loose. Oh, I think, oh, this could be his kind of girlfriend. Maybe. Happy Valentine's. Um, oh, he does also love adding the kind of flare effects or glare effects uh, in his work. And... Uh, yeah. You know what? I do like this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is more of a... Okay. Again, he's pretty good with the... Oh, ho, 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 ho. He added some smoke uh, to, to this kind of sword because of the rain. Nice. So. Pretty good stuff. Now, this is pretty badass. Um, again, he does love adding the kind of glare effect, and I think this is one of kind of his speed painting kind of style. If you go to his YouTube channel and find his very first videos, he does have a few speed painting ones, and it's kind of in this style or realm. He even added the kind of glow effects or kind of uh, reflective effects in kind of the raindrops. So the rain stuff could be in a new layer and then he added a uh, maybe a soft brush to kind of light up especially this area right here near the uh, lights. So we'll drag that to the side. Oh I did. I did. So, And I do want to make work like this where it's a little faster and it does get the concept out quickly and he doesn't really use a lot of a uh, he doesn't spend too much time with the photos when he's uh, kind of uh, speed painting. So I do like his effectiveness and quickness with speed. So yeah. So this one is more painterly as you can see. And uh, he's actually kind of good with the kind of metallic kind of material stuff. I think it's because of his experience of course. But uh, oh, this one's kind of nice. Uh, not a lot of texture though, it's a little plain, but he did add the kind of a stuff. <laughs> Holy shit, what is this? Some kind of creature design, crystals, Nasamex. Hey, not bad. I like how he used some of the, uh, the materials and some of the NASA kind of stuff, and even the uh, logo kind of made it look very, uh, NASA like <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I do love the kind of blur effect here and, yeah. and again most of this is kind of painted with some kind of graphical elements uh, Speed painting I think uh, okay, again, he he's also kind of good with the uh, the effects and stuff, the kind of highlights, the glows. Pretty cool. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, wolf, wolf, wolf. Nice. And again, smoke stuff, the blurs, and that kind of cinematic effect with the green and red, or blue and red. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Ooh, Ooh I love this kind of uh, effect right here. Excuse me. So these are some of his kind of doodles and stuff uh, posted six years ago. Hmm, this reminds me of a kind of an old anime film. Shit. Um, the wolf chick. <laughs> she has like a knife and wolf. Uh, okay. Ooh, I love this. So Neo Japan. Uh, so this is kind of his personal project, Neo Japan 2202. 
uh and even to this day he does update it uh wow so this is more of his you can tell his more photo bash Ooh, fuck <laughs> And uh, he, thankfully, he does have a lot of videos uh, showing his kind of process for doing these kinds of stuff where he would usually have one kind of photo of a guy and then he would just uh, photo bash all sorts of things. And I remember seeing one of his videos where he would have like one of his, I, th I think it could be an exercise, but uh, where he would have one photo and he would use that just that just <laughs> that one photo uh to kind of photo bash everything in the shit what am i trying to say <laughs> but <laughs> he would limit his it would limit himself to just one photo and then yeah it's kind of cool i think he designed some kind of helmet or a head or some kind of character with just one photo and yeah it's kind of cool and i think it also encourages some kind of uh creativity and uh oh i love this environment even though it's simple it does carry the mood excuse me um that's nice really nice um Shit, why is it? Oof, not bad. Again with the effects, pretty cool. And he loves adding the kind of glares and the raindrops. Let's more speed painting stuff. Okay. So this is kind of his book concept, okay, for Neo Japan. Pat Labor. Oh, I think this is some kind of mech movie or anime series, Pat Labor, I think. So this is his kind of take on the uh, the film. This is more, uh, yeah. So Merry Christmas. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a mech. Uh, this could be some kind of 3D thing. Now, I'm going to avoid this kind of 3D work uh, as much as I can. And just focus on his 2D stuff. Because, so these are some of his designs for some drop ships. Um, some character designs. Very interesting. Although he doesn't have a lot of people in his, at least YouTube channel, uh, showing his kind of process. Um, I think it does have Batman and one kind of chick, and then that's it. Most of his kind of process videos are just mechs and stuff. Um, nice arms. Um, so this, okay, some concepts. Okay. Oh, wow. What is this? Interstellar dogfight. Posted five years ago. Okay. This could be actually some kind of keyframe for me. Oh, some kind of Evangelion kind of thing. Eva RX Zero. So it's kind of a mashup between his two favorite mechs. Not bad. I do love the Evangelion series. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. It's kind of an organic kind of mech. Oh! Okay. Again, um, a lot of his work can actually become... Or is very in a kind of... Uh, it's sort of in the kind of marketing kind of level where the art piece can be used for a poster and stuff. Um, for the type of work that I want to do, it's not necessarily in this kind of um, level. It's more of a concept kind of a thing. But uh, yeah. So what's cool about his work is that he can do a lot of 
conceptual speed paintings plus very kind of well kind of rendered out stuff for marketing kind of work so yeah and it's also pretty good so oh he does have a few line sketches here or line drawings and then some basic kind of uh shading Okay, oh devil toys. Oof, again, photo bashing stuff and then some nice blending painting. Look at that. Damn. And I think he adds some noise, just a little bit. Again, he loves the rain kind of stuff. But I think th this is what is known for right now, not necessarily his kind of speed paintings, but more of his kind of photo bashed, uh, photo manipulation kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, he has a lot of views in his uh, YouTube channel, or at least some of his videos. Oh, so many, sorry about that. Oh, ho ho ho. Um... Damn. <laughs> Montreal under lockdown after terror rumors. Sure. Sure. Oh, he does have a video of this um, thing. Hmm. This could be our future police. Um, very scary. You know, sometimes I uh, I'm kind of hesitant doing. Oh, this one was is a Pacific Rim piece, and I think he was inspired by the work of John Wallen Liberto, and I will eventually be kind of taking on or doing an art review of John Wallen Liberto's work, because it's actually really cool, because he only generally uses the circle brush, um, kind of the default Photoshop circle brush. I think more than Anthony Jones, because Anthony Jones sometimes likes to vary things up a bit. But for John Wall and Lamberto, um, uh, is just really cool with his uh, kind of paintings, and he has a lot of Pacific Rim kind of stuff. And I, I did buy one of his tutorials, and uh, it's actually kind of cool to listen to. Okay. So yeah, when it comes to pieces like this, I'm kind of hesitant because, um, like a part of me is hesitant because I feel like I'm propping up the the military industrial complex, you know what I mean? Or the kind of police state. And sometimes I have to remind myself that whenever I do kind of mechs and stuff, that it's not the mech's fault. <laughs> Right, because I'm starting to get, uh, I'm kind of becoming that kind of guy that's kind of blaming the guns instead of the person, and I don't want to be that guy. And um, so I have to remind myself that whenever I'm kind of doing a kind of war themed kind of thing, that um, they're not necessarily propping up war. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay, another portrait of his girlfriend. Nice. Oh, but, uh, oh, what is this? So he painted off a screenshot of a game and it looks actually very interesting. So should one, okay. Um, I have to remind myself that, uh, um, oh shit, what's my point? Um, nice. Uh, that, yeah, I'm not necessarily propping up the kind of, uh, oh, very well done. So this is based off her iconic pose. Again, it's so well blended together. Oh, ho, 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 nice. <laughs> he added a kind of gif or gif. Shit, what's the point? Uh, oh, this is a PewDiePie, PewDiePie. Shit, what's it? Ah, uh, damn it. Okay. Wow. Oh! It's actually kind of 
a good, good, good. He can do a lot of characters, I guess. Wow, so Jonathan Ting is actually kind of multi talented. Damn. I actually haven't seen this uh, post before. And I've seen a lot of YouTube channels that, uh, or kind of YouTube type of artist, artists do a lot of kind of characters and stuff, like portraits and stuff. So it's kind of a common thing in YouTube. And I think you can get very popular by doing these sorts of things. But uh, yeah. So yeah, whenever you know you add some kind of mixed stuff to your work, it's not necessary. You're not necessarily propping up the kind of uh, like the military stuff or the military industrial complex, the kind of evil side. You're just propping up the tools, and it's not necessarily bad because uh, mechs are tools. You know, they're not. I think there should always be constant development in terms of defense and i do mean defense not offense um but see that's kind of the the, the hard thing is people will use defense as or defense so-called defense as an excuse to whoa to do some horrible offense on countries and stuff so yeah don't be so hard on yourself when you're drawing kind of mech stuff or kind of war themed things. Because it's kind of a part of life, I guess. But it's not... <sighs> Shit, what? I, I do have a point. I do have a point. I do have a point. Um... Don't blame the tools. Okay, that's it. that's it. Don't blame the tools. Blame the people. Okay, so this is, I think, some kind of marketing work. Uh, nice. So again, he can kind of do a lot of marketing stuff that can end up in kind of posters and kind of cover arts for things. So this is part night, part kind of modern. Uh thing very nice so he does have a few characters here and there nice ah i love this okay uh, so he does have oh yeah he oh, not only does he does mechs and stuff he likes knights kind of the armor and stuff uh, he reminds me... Oh, he does have, a, I think, a YouTube video of this thing. Yeah. And even though he used a kind of a, a photo for the face, he still painted over it to make it more his. And it's actually pretty cool the way he paints. He can actually paint. And I've seen him... Uh, uh, if you check out this kind of Batman piece, he did paint the, fit, the mouth and stuff and it's pretty you know good <laughs> and again it looks very more anime ish sort of you know the kind of uh, Japanese kind of 3D stuff <laughs> they have a kind of face like this it's very kind of Asian ish okay oh <sighs> Damn. And again, I think he does have a video of the Oh, he doesn't have a video of this. Look at that. Again, he loves this kind of concept of um we're kind of in a ship. Aboard a ship that's kind of above Earth. Does it make sense? A little bit. Oh, he loves this type of helmet. If you check out one of his early speed paintings, this is kind of a solid kind of helmet that he uh, usually does. Where it's kind of a glass. Like the entire head, front part, is kind of made of glass or something. And then, yeah. Pretty cool. And he added a kind of hologram thing here. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, he does have a YouTube video of this guy. And I think he started out with this, and then again, photo bash, photo bash, some paint, some paint, and then more painting, and then fixing things up, 
and then some photo bash, some lighting, some effects, some more effects. Fuck me. Look at that. So this is some kind of rail gun. And he added a kind of shark kind of a painting here. And I think adding a little some details in this way adds more it adds some kind of personality uh to the character involved. Cause often, you know, when whenever say you're kind of making a mech or something, it can feel kind of boring or look boring because it's kind of like a uh, just a random mech it doesn't have a personality, you know. So I think adding some kind of detail in this way kind of helps to personify the thing, and or at least it helps show the person that it's owned by someone and that someone has a personality. So space pirates, frontier buccaneers. So this is based, I think, on the previous thing we viewed. What is this? So this is more of a VR piece, I think. <laughs> and eventually I may buy, <laughs> if I have the money, uh, that kind of 3D thing where you can kind of uh, view things in kind of the 360 kind of world. Of course, for concept art purposes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, again, photo bashed. Um, you know, I think Johnson Tink can work on films like Transformers and Terminator, if ever. You know, Terminator is kind of uh, dead now. Um, I think they should just stop and move on. Um, but yeah, maybe some more uh, Transformers. I mean, even, pe even if people hate Transformers, I mean, people still watch it. I mean, I still watch it because it's pretty epic. You know, I understand that sometimes the, uh, the storyline is kind of oversimplified. And it's just kind of a uh, too fast paced where there are so many kind of action scenes and there's no kind of build up in the kind of storyline. And uh, I, I do get those kinds of uh, criticisms, but um, Transformers are cool. And uh, yeah. Okay, some more character art. Again, pretty good photo bashing and some nice paint overs to kind of clean things up a bit. And, uh, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. again, he loves adding those kind of rain droplets and those kind of t -t 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 little kind of, uh, again, nice kind of marketing piece, I think. So this is a creature design. So it's a creature demo he did for his students on mixing animals into one creature. Maybe he can even work on films like Avatar, although he doesn't have a lot in his portfolio that involves creatures and stuff. He's heavily kind of mech, sci-fi, some kind of fantasy sometimes, character stuff. There's kind of a Coke can right there. Okay, oh, so Gears of War 4 concept compilation. He has a lot of these, so we'll just skip these. But again, he's very focused on character stuff with some kind of mech elements, suits, stuff, sci fi, Normandy, Normandy, 1987. Sigil! <laughs> Ooh! Merry Christmas! Nice. Oh, I love the kind of wheels. They're kind of pink and glowing. Yee. Very Tron like in a way. Wow, he can paint chicks too. Not bad. Oh ho ho. So this could be kind of a chick face. Um so done for this month's character design challenge theme. Dragon Ball? I don't know how this relates to Dragon Ball. But I do like the kind of Tron elements here in the bike. And the uh, lollipop is a nice touch. Um, okay. Oh, ho, 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 Destiny fan art. Uh, wow, this one is actually kind of deviating from his normal style. 
I think it's because of the textured stuff. But again, you can tell he's not a bad painter. He's pretty good. Uh, very talented. And I, I also found a video of his. Uh, it's kind of an interview um, where he... Uh, where he was he essentially he essentially was able to buy a home a house for his parents I think because of this kind of work his concept art stuff and I thought that was really really uh nice of him and I think I can kind of feel his kind of relief you know being able to support your family that way I think is um is what most I think of us would kind of uh want to do and uh, as much as we want to do this kind of concept art stuff because it's fun it's very we like building worlds and stuff we also want to be able to support our um family and uh so it did start with a basic sketch and then he painted kind of a very typical painting process i like that so yeah so good on Johnson thing for supporting his parents. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's also very inspirational to see his kind of progress, because he does get better over time as well. I mean, yeah. <sighs> okay. So fantasy art or uh, fan art for Destiny. Um, oof. Destiny stuff. Oh, I like this kind of painting. Okay. Some kind of uh, design proposals. Okay. This, I think this is a guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Marasov, Queen of Titans. So I think we can drag her to the side. Because, uh, yeah. Oh, he has a few of these pieces where it's kind of a character design, but very uh, in the theme of knights. So, yeah. So this one actually reminds me of Anthony Jones. Because of the black and stuff. Oh, oh although... This was slightly inspired, according to Johnson, by Solomon Joseph Solomon. Is he an artist or something? Oh, I love the back. This could be kind of photo bashed. He found a nice back of some maybe CrossFit kind of chick. Gosh, I need to work out. Oh, fuck. Horus, Queen of the Wings. Damn, and it looks very finished. Oh, this one is, this can't be painted. This is probably photo bashed. I mean, the arm and the elbow. This one is painted. Maybe he had a kind of reference photo in the beginning and then he just kind of painted over it to make it look more his style. Oh, I love the kind of armor and the kind of, uh, it's not necessarily shiny, like say a knight's kind of armor. But, oh, I love that kind of feather effect or design thing there. Damn. Love the eyes. Oh, and the kind of horror's eye with the kind of... He made the symbol as a kind of part of the design of the... Oh, wow. And I like how everything fits here. First of all, the wallpaper in the back of the kind of Egyptian stuff. And even the fashion. Wow. I wonder if he did this in one go. Or maybe he did some sketches beforehand to kind of figure all of this out. But damn. Even the bow has a kind of a feather effect. And the armor. And I love this kind of dress thing. Damn. You know, I think concept artists are very adaptable i think they can be in all sorts of uh design fields because the process is kind of the same you know what that's not true i mean it is true but it's not just for concept 
artists and stuff if you're kind of a fashion designer and then you kind of jump in into say interior design you'll probably find out that the process is very similar where you have kind of the initial initial phase you have some kind of uh, analysis problem kind of objective stuff like finding objectives and solving problems or sorry analyzing the problem and then some kind of proposals lots of proposals and then the finished product there's kind of a similar kind of line of work or design process and i think we're all kind of in the same kind of a uh, uh, field or we subscribe to the same kind of process oh wait let's go back there's a hot chick this reminds me of the the mech in Pacific Rim, the R Russian one. The one that died. How sad. Um, but yeah. Ah, uh, it's pretty good with the painting. This looks so finished. Damn. Did they use 3D? I don't think so. Photoshop. Yep. Now this is kind of in a different level for me and uh, I may not be able to uh... This hand could have been, uh, this is probably photo bashed. He found a very nice kind of a... Uh... But again, the way he paints over the photos, especially the face. Fuck. <laughs> Damn, it looks so realistic too. Ah shit, nice. Awesome. Let's get the full version as well. <laughs> oh, I think he does have a YouTube video of this. There you go. Yeah. So he found... Uh, fuck. So yeah, I think this is kind of what he's known for. Kind of mech stuff. And uh, yeah. Photo bash. Painting. Ah. Uh, and it's so kind of fine. So, yep. That's kind of his process right there. Building things up slowly, layer by layer. Ah, fuck. Okay, so he doesn't have a... Oh, he's kind of a one-go kind of guy, I think. Generally, where he's pretty confident with his painting design ability, so he can start from a very basic kind of base, like a photo base or maybe a SketchUp kind of thing, or a 3D base, and then he's pretty confident in building it up uh, without having to do uh, like lots of thumbnails and shit. So I think that's a very uh, commendable ability Christ yeah and you can see as he goes he kind of makes changes if it's not satisfied with the kind of design see that so instead of kind of doing thumbnails or sketches on the side he just um, probably well he does it in stages on the very same kind of illustration. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Shit, did I drag it to this sound? Drag it. Ooh, this one actually looks very 3D. So maybe he did use 3D. I think he did. Oh, this is kind of a toy. Nice. A collectible kind of thing. Damn, bone face. Yep, more concept stuff, photo bashed. Uh, looks tight. Oh, I well, not really. It actually looks a little painterly in some areas, but uh, still pretty cool. So this is a Boston police drone. Eee. 
I mean, these kind these kind of uh, concepts look really cool, but um, ah, this is kind of scary as well. You know what I mean? Um, especially with this whole COVID thing. You know, they're kind of recommending. I, I forgot. I need I need to reference this. And uh, but uh, they're kind of suggesting that because of COVID, you know. The military uh there's less need for military people like actual human beings i mean th- there's already this kind of wave of propaganda now not everyone in the military is kind of a uh, blind to the uh, the bigger picture stuff but uh there's already a solid kind of a uh, culture of just fighting and not necessarily thinking of the bigger kind of thing that's kind of a big big problem in the everywhere not just in the military but uh yeah they're suggesting that there should be less people and more kind of autonomous kind of uh drones autonomous meaning they command themselves essentially and i think they even recommend like stuff for like generals like in the level of a general for them to be kind of (laughs) like uh run by ai and i'm like no 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 (laughs) have we not learned from films like terminator you know like things go bad if you make them faster and stronger you know mechs and stuff i mean that's why sometimes i'm very reluctant to kind of do things like this because what am i trying to do am i trying to prop up this kind of concept i mean again you know mechs and robots they can be tools but uh the moment you add some kind of sophisticated sophisticated AI, I mean, fuck, man. How can we defend ourselves from these kind of machines? Right? Oh, fuck. But again, let me just drag the photo. Because <laughs> it's still awesome. Uh, so this is a Robin Hood print. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So this is an Eva X Pat Labor. So it's kind of a mashup of his. Oh, so he did. Oh, excuse him. Wow. So he's showing his process here. Um. So he starts out from a uh, NASA photo. You know, let's look at the GIF. Shit. Okay. And again, he doesn't do thumbnails, I think. I mean, he can, but I think he's pretty confident with his ability to kind of start from the very beginning and then work his way up. So a NASA kind of thing. Establishing perspectives. Main silhouette of the mech. Detailing it a bit. More photo bash. More photo bash. More detailing. More painting. More paint overs. More design paint overs. Some background stuff. Some photo bashing again. Some atmosphere, more paint overs, more paint overs, more paint overs, more kind of uh, darkening, more paint overs, photo bash, lighting, atmosphere, photo bash, atmosphere, photo bash, and then the. Yeah. Christ! Let me drag the GIF. So, yeah, check out this post because he does have a few notes on how he kind of approached this thing. Fuck my life. Um, shit. Yeah, I do recommend to check out this post. It's the Eva X Pat Labor. Let me drag the GIF because I do like the GIF. Um, GIF? GIF. So this is a Witcher 2077. I think this is some kind of fan art. Uh, so it mixed the world of... Uh, Shit, what's it called? The cyberpunk thing? Plus the Witcher. Damn. Toss a coin to your Witcher. <laughs> okay, some mech designs, different kind of proposals, color proposals, some design, slight design variations here. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Damn, truly. 
So character design challenge, Chun Li, uh, he did update legs with thrusters. Damn. So I we definitely used the photo, but again he. If you kind of zoom out or see this thing from afar, it looks kind of a 3D piece actually. Um, but again, the way he blends things together and the way he paints the face, it shows that you know he's not dependent so much on the. Uh, he uses the photos as a base and not necessarily a determinant of his whole piece. He can always paint over, and you can see in his kind of gifs and stuff that he's not limited by the photo. He's kind of in charge, the commander in chief, bro. So Jonathan Ting is a king. <laughs> so this is a border knot. Um, damn. Damn. Okay, next photo. So this is a British transport police. Shit. I'm not very comfortable. Again, oh my god. The new world order. The new world order. But again, it looks cool, so. <laughs> again, whenever you paint stuff like this, or uh, kind of the police kind of, or military kind of mechs, you're not necessarily supporting the state, you know, this, the actions of the state. You just like mech stuff, right? It's what you do with the actual tools, okay? Because uh, I do feel guilty sometimes if I ever do something like that. And um, creating kind of violent theme stuff doesn't necessarily mean you're propping up violence. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's kind of the whole video game thing where people say that it can or it uh, promotes violence. But, uh, you know, most... I, I've played video games. We don't do violent stuff, you know? Maybe it's just a way to explore an idea, you know? And kind of uh, have fun because usually when we play games it's more of a fun thing we won't actually do it you know we're not it's not a direct kind of a causation of violence and because uh, even before video games uh, people play with kind of a wooden guns uh, throw we like using bows and arrows throwing rocks you know it's kind of a it's, it's a nice thing you know shooting things down it's a uh, <laughs> Oh, he does have a video of this. Um, SpaceX pirate. Damn. So this could be part of his pirate series. Um, maybe. Alright, so this is more of his kind of uh, night stuff. Um, it's a, kind of a mix between sports, modern guns, and night stuff. And of course, the essential hot chick that uh, wears the whole thing. Oh, rollerblade. So this could be like a kind of a game thing. Elizabeth Yeager, Akira Kimura. Damn. This is kind of a Japan's kind of a character. This could be America's uh, chick. <laughs> BMW. What is this? Canon. Oh, they're branded. Uh, uh, sponsored, XCD sponsored. Ooh, I love the kind of concept of the kind of racer thing. Where some guys would uh, prop up the vehicle. In this case, it's not a vehicle, it's a character with some kind of mech elements that looks like a knight. And uh, so they could be kind of racy. This would be a kind of race, but there will be violence because uh, there's this gun so <laughs> I think violence and they're also pretty armored so I think things will be scary um, uh, this is a nail gun I think um, combat engineer demo this could be an engineer that's um, also combative oh no this could just be an engineer right in the field, maybe as a constructor kind of guy, but can essentially use the nail gun to kind of shoot people. 
I do want the nail gun for self defense, just to be safe. You know. <laughs> Not sure though how far it would go. Um, so this is more of his uh, kind of night stuff, kind of mech stuff. It's, oh, I love the effect. And gun. So yeah, it's kind of violent sport. She's bleeding in the face. Poor thing. Um, but yeah, I do like uh, character stuff like this where they're supposed. So there's a kind of story involved. And um, instead of it being a flat kind of thing. I mean, I get it. It's for design purposes. If you kind of see those kind of turnarounds kind of stuff. But uh, I do appreciate stuff like this where you can tell a bit of the character. Or you can add a little more story, you know, and make it more cool that way. So this one is a combat astronaut. So Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh, again. <laughs> you know, uh, shit. I mean, I get it. We need defense. You know, we need weapons. Not just the military, by the way, every single person should have, like, a means to defend themselves. But uh, some people use defense, again, as an excuse to just keep funding all sorts of disastrous kind of uh, stuff. And, um, again, people make money. There are people that make money when uh, dropped. When bombs are dropped, you know? So I'm very kind of, um... <sighs> Shit. It kind of pains me to, um... Again, you're not supporting the, uh... <laughs> uh... Anyway. So these are some kind of mech creature designs. Alien stuff. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, it's pretty chilly here. Oh, fuck. Ship designs. What is this? So she has a pretty weird arm. I'll say that. Fluffy. Or ice? Eh. Wow, this seems very elegant for a gun. <laughs> Nice design though. So this guy is actually pretty cute. Um, I think it's because it's kind of round and stuff. Blot, 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 blot. Oh, shit. Some more design stuff. <laughs> yep, some uh, weapon design. Kind of a vehicle design, kind of a bike. It's kind of a bike. Um, so it's kind of a ship, spaceship. Yes, more night stuff. Um, I think this is kind of his own personal project of his. Really cool stuff. I love the old-fashioned kind of gun. Yeah, it's kind of a long-range kind of thing. Wow, it looks so cool. Haha, <laughs> Adidad. <laughs> Damn. I love the way I love the way he mixes everything up. It just looks right, right? It just makes sense. <laughs> love this. Oh, this is the uh, the kind of photo thing that I'm that I was talking about earlier, where he just picked one photo. Okay. A uh, single photo to this. So he essentially took this photo of a mechanical thing and then turned it into a mech. So very nice. Oh shit. It's a great exercise. It's photo bash concept art exercise. And uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Ugh. Ugh. Oh shit, more police drones. Fuck. Oh, he turned a camcorder to a robot. Now oh, that's nice. <laughs> I 
We're here to keep you safe and secure <laughs> for the common good. For the collective. Oh, some Viking shit. Odin. Damn. So it's kind of a mixture of whatever. Wow, this guy's fucking jacked. Photo bashed. Damn. So, in light of recent events, I figure healthcare workers could use an upgrade. <laughs> the COVID response team. Oh my, uh, I just, I don't agree. <laughs> no! I mean, it's the same thing with the whole kind of military, um, the whole shit. The kind of war on terror thing. Where the military were in the front lines. And if you criticize the kind of big picture stuff, you're essentially, or the other side would criticize you for kind of demeaning the frontliners quote unquote and um it's just so hard to be able to talk about these kinds of stuff when they kind of go that route oh you're you hate the frontliners they're fighting for you you know and uh, and this whole un thing come on new world order shit my man damn but the photo bash is pretty good <laughs> <sighs> Again, Elex is pretty good at blending the whole thing together. It looks so nice. And whenever time puts a figure, a certain guy, or girl, person in the front, uh, it's just, I don't agree. Um, for example, what if you don't want to take a certain kind of uh, thing, right? And then this guy shows up in your door yeah you're gonna have to take it we'll take you out of your house put in a facility and you're going to take the fucking shot right or maybe he could just put the kind of the vaccine stuff in this thing as ammo and then just shoot people <laughs> uh yes the world will end and we will all be zombies oh my god this could be 3d but I'm checking out. Oh shit, Photoshop. Fuck this guy. Damn, so this could be. So he turned this, it was inspired by this, and turned this into what the fuck? So obviously, again, he did use some photos, but he kind of owned it and made it his. So this could be some kind of a. Uh... Electric kind of no shit, electric kind of weapon. Bzz. Maybe this is 5G. <laughs> oh shit, a communist kind of sign right there. Take a bleat. Oh, Ava one. So, you know, we'll start from the beginning. Um, let's just drag the GIF and the photo because I do. Ah. Uh, Yeah, he owns the kind of uh, the mech kind of designs and stuff. NASA photo and build up the environment a bit. Silhouette, paint over, paint over, paint over, more paint over, more paint over, some lighting, some photo bash, some photo bash, some details, photo bash, some graphic stuff. He removed it, some lighting, some more photo bash, more paint overs. And then, wow. So, how long do these usually take? I'm very curious. Um. I think for something like this, in uh, if I consider my own kind of pace, this could take about five hours. Um, I think five hours for me, <laughs> or maybe seven. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh shit! Christ! Pretty cool though. Uh, okay. Okay. Character designs. Oh, I think that's his uh, last piece. Or a recent piece in his portfolio. This is his most uh, recent piece. Posted a month ago. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, I do recommend. Check out Johnson Ting's work. Oh, subscribe. Follow him on ArtStation. I will provide the links in the description description below. Um, he does have a YouTube channel. Follow him or subscribe to him there. And um, yeah, I hope you um, 
found a new artist to look up to. Uh, okay, in terms of his work, what can I take away? His blending skills uh, when it comes to photo bashing. Uh, it's very seamless. It's also um, the way he can start from or build up his illustration and not necessarily have to do all sorts of kind of preliminary sketches and thumbnails. He can just kind of, uh, he can just go in and be more direct and just build things as he goes, right? So I do like that kind of uh, approach. Now I do want to get good also at my thumbnail game and my sketches because that's where I want to be. But I also want to be able to finish or do something. Let's say if I was inspired by a certain film, and I want to do something. I want to be able to start from just a basic one sketch, and then and then just kind of build my way, layer by layer, to something that's more finished, without having to do all sorts of um, preliminary work, and just kind of be, kind of go with the flow. You know what I mean? So I think that's a very good concept or good thing that I can see in Johnson Ting's work. So yeah. Uh, I'll see you in the uh, next episode of the Art Review series. And I think we will be reviewing... Uh, Frank Kong. Frank Kong also has a YouTube channel. And uh, yeah. Stay free.